In the morning we built the city. In the afternoon walked through its streets. Evening saw us leaving. We wandered through our days as if they would never end. All of us imagined we had endless time to spend. We hardly saw the crossroads and small attention gave to landmarks on the journey from the cradle to the grave. Cradle to the grave. Right guys, just a little one today. We've come out, me and Bert, for a little walk. Not so long ago, somebody took some great pictures of the church behind me, the Independent Chapel. We'll talk about the independence movement. We're also going to talk a little bit about the resurrectionists and certain things about that. So we go into the churchyard, which used to be behind this building near the bottling glass. So I'm standing on the crossroads now. I've got the amazing pub next to me, which is the old, found, the old foundry. We all know the old foundry, very old pub. I've got some pictures of that, I'll show you that now. You can see that from Britain from above. And the place we're going today from Britain from above is this building here. So built in about the 18, about 1820s, very early. They broke away from the Resilient movement and they became independent because they wanted more autonomy from the church. So they believed that everybody in the church had a place and had something to say. It wasn't like the rich people sat there and the poor people sat there. We all sat together. But consequently, a lot of people that lived, uh, went to that church were middle class and you'll see that from some of the graves, guys. So let's just walk over now and see what we can find. Just crossing the road now, trying to stay alive. Without getting killed. <laughs> go, let's go. Straight away, we can see the influence of the resurrectionists. It became impossible to keep the grave safe. So during the 1820s and 30s, before laws come in allowing the resurrectionists or the theatre dissectionists to take bodies from the poor people that died in the area, they had to fence it off. So one of the precautions they did was have big, massive fences to stop people getting in and stealing the bodies. And there's an example of it here. Beautiful cast iron, beautiful Victorian cast iron. The building itself would have been in the middle and either side would have had this amazing fencing. Very sharp. You know, you wouldn't want to climb that because that would empower you. Because originally they would literally Oh, in we go. They'd literally, they'd literally steal bodies from two or three foot underground. They wouldn't bury them very deep. There was no, no need to bury them very deep because nobody was stealing them. Uh, but when people wanted to get into medicine, they suddenly had a need for bodies. Now, during the 1700s, that wasn't a problem. During the bloody rain, lots of people were getting hung. Their practice or part of their, okay, this man is amazing. Part of their, um, their punishment would have been being dissected. Now, because of that, there was plenty of bodies. Nobody needed to steal bodies. But obviously, after time, that stopped happening. They started to become a bit more progressive. So this brought a market about, a really sick market, really. People that they call the resurrectionists would go out to graveyards that were freshly dug or freshly buried people and dig them up with a shovel, wooden shovel, so it didn't make any noise. Um, so yeah, it was like a, a battle that started between, this is where the church was, guys, where I'm standing now. You can see there's no graves. And up the front there, I'll show you that it's later, there's a wall where you can see where the cellar might have been originally. So yeah, so there was a, this movement started where people were stealing bodies. So it was a battle between the stealers and the bodies being buried. Now there was no law against stealing bodies, guys. It wasn't illegal. The, the illegality in it was breaking the grave. That was prompt damage of property. Because the body didn't actually have any kind of wealth as far as the government was concerned. It was a dead body. But if you got caught by the family, they often killed people who they saw breaking into bodies or stealing, obviously stealing loved ones. But one of the sad facts is, guys, we're in this graveyard now, and any one of these graves could be empty, but yet they've been venerated, cared for, flowers have been brought by loved ones, thinking the bodies are there, but they're not. The body was taken the very next night. They were buried, say 1820. When this but yeah, you can imagine, they'd literally they, they'd bury them the next night, and the next night, sometimes the vicars were involved, so the vicar would be the one that told them that there was um, a, a dead body, fresh dead body. They also had people that were like scouts, people who worked in the, like spies, people that worked in the funeral service, people that worked in the church, anybody that had the know, because there was a lot of money to be made, uh, and people started to protect the graves with stones. So I think these, maybe that's where the stone actually idea come from, these big stones. But like I say, I don't think these could have been put on the day they were buried. It would have took time for the brickwork to go up. Unless it did eventually. Oh, look at that one, hiding up the corner there. And I mean, in that case, 
Oh, you've got to watch where you tread. Let's see how far we can get back. 40, 1844, guys. So this was resurrectionist time. No slab on it, just a stone. This body could be missing. And that is the sad fact of the matter. This body could be missing. It could be taken by a resurrectionist. We'll never know. But many people were praying to, God, to, praying to their ancestors, thinking, bringing flowers to bodies that had already gone and been dissected. It's sad, but it's true. You know, these bodies were going ma missing on a massive scale because the, the, the medicine at the time was exploding, you know. So they came up with people that couldn't afford cages over their bodies, couldn't afford cages. And this church itself, guys, like I say, it was a splinter church, a breakaway church from the, Meth uh, the Wesleyans. So they decided to have their own church. And I think in 1820, this beautiful chapel was built. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of like, uh, moss and stuff on these graves. I was going to bring a brush up with me, but I thought they'd been cleared, but obviously not. Obviously not. Look at this one. Joseph. Joseph Trow. Tro. Tro. I know a Tromans. Some of these surnames might be familiar to us. But I mean, look at this. How sad is this? So we've got the really busy road out there. Most people walk past this and don't even realise. Recently, somebody has, a go, has had a go at clearing away some of this. But I don't think they've done that for the sake of the graveyard. They've done that so the police officers can see inside if anybody's doing naughty, yeah? It's a more of a, an antisocial thing than a love for this area. That there looks like some of the wall, so you can see what I mean. So there, that would have been some of the building. And there, I think there's some of the building in there as well. For 100 years, over 100 years, people came here and prayed and prayed and they respected the dead. They loved the people that were, they were burying, they would have visited. I'm sure whilst this was in action, these graves would have been tended, these graves would have had flowers. Now that's all gone. The, the, the members of family have been forgotten. You know, there's people watching this video that might have ancestors here. There's gonna be graves here. It's just, there's a stone there. But they're all covered in ivy. This needs clearing massively. It all needs clearing. The gully that runs down the side is very old gully as well. Here we go. If we can clear it all off somehow, somehow, maybe some government money, I don't know. They're doing this massive, massive updo of Dudley at the minute with all the transport money and stuff. You know, put a bit aside for the pride, the pride of the area, the people that built Dudley. These men and women buried here, they actually built Dudley, guys. They ain't just, oh, is that a badger? I hope that's a badger, not a grave digger. Because uh, there are some macabre people still out there, mate, that are doing a trade in skulls and stuff. Big piece of stonework there, off a grave, and a stone off a grave there. Right in the corner, near the back corner of the church, guys, so just here on the map. And I'm fighting my way through the nettles and stuff, just to kind of give you guys a good idea of what we've got. And I'm right in the corner now. Lots of um, elderberry trees that love disturbed ground. There's some kind of fox there being buried in. This is where you might find stolen goods, bags, there you go, straight away. Somebody, unscrupulous thief, has taken from the blind, cancer, who knows, monsters, monsters. Oh wow, look at this bit of stonework here. It's a name on it. Everywhere you look, there's shattered graves, guys, shattered graves. This looks like an early kind of way in. And you can see how much lower, there must have been steps here that have been filled in. Again, the trees have took over, but there must have been steps here. This is 1820s, 1830s, an entrance leading onto the gully. Bodies all around us. The underneath me, two or three foot below the ground, there are bodies, hundreds of bodies. There's a stone, there's two. You can see what's on it. It's what? Let's turn it over. We will put these back up at some point. Like we'll try and find a way of putting them back up. What's that say? Let's see if it is a baby stone. Maybe 1860. 60? 1860. 1855. 1860. But look that at this one. 1855. 1855, that might have been birth. So he's five years old. It's crazy, isn't it? They have a little version for a child. And there's one over here hiding. This one's got no stone on, so uh, let's get the, the weeds off it, give it some respect, and let's crouch down here and see what we've got. Right, guys, anybody that's good on the family genealogy, 
can have a look into this for us. Uh, so it's in affectionate remembrance of David McGill, Scotsman, who was born at St. John's Dalfrey or Dalry, Kirk, Kirkard Brightshire, where the hell is that? Kirk Brightshire. Is that up north? Must be. Anything with Kirk in is a northern thing, isn't it? And died at Victoria Terry Studley. We'll find out where that is, guys, and we'll put that on the screen for you now. Hopefully it'll be on the 1855 Roper map, or if not, the 1871. Yeah, so, yeah, amazing. Age 55. Thanks to, thanks to, thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, if anybody can find out David McGill, who lived at Victoria Terrace, I will look into myself, and if I can get anything on him, it doesn't actually give a date of his death, does it? Yes, it does. Um, Victoria Terrace, 1864, guys, middle of the 19th century. You know, we're talking Boer War stuff. <coughs> well, just after the Boer War. I know, I've just showed them that. That would have been an old doorway, wouldn't it? There's one grave here that's really in the bushes, guys, and I want to show you, even though it's going to be hard to get to. This one has actually got lead in. So let me lean in here like this so I can show you. Right, so we've got, in love, look at this lead, and this was being nicked at one point by unscrupulous lead thieves. Must have took them years to desecrate graves and get anything from it. Disgusting behaviour. That's, that's what we've become though, I think. We've become so detached to our ancestors in respect, and even to the living there, we disrespect the living. So the dead don't stand a chance, do they? But in loving memory, Thomas Harvey, probably once much loved, again, a good age, telling that this place was middle class, you know. If you went to a poor type part of town and found an independent chapel there, they probably couldn't afford one. You'd find lots of kids dying. But yeah, okay, so let's just read into this. 71 years, good age, also of Hannah Harvey. Is there any Harveys living today? Dearly beloved wife of the above, who died August 27th, 1915. I think during the war, so who knows? This could be a uh, munitionette, and she's too old for that. It might have been stress of the war. Probably got kids who died in the war. That first year of World War One was hell, guys, 1914 to 15. You know, they had some real nasty battles and just some real horrible tragedies. Uh, blessed art again, another another reading to God, their, their interpretation of God. This would have been up against the wall. Bombert, well done, mate, mind your back, mate. Oh, wow, wow, look at that, man. That is stunning. Have you got, wind your back, mate. Look at that, it's that beautiful, like, church. <sighs> it's got that kind of shape. Remembrance of? Smite, Smith, a Mr. Smith, 1857. A beautiful old stone grave. Another one, Bert, spotting them now. And there's one there, Bert. Wow, we're uncovering them now, guys. That's Ivy's getting tape. stripped away. Is it another piece of that? I think it is. I think it is, yeah. Somebody's desecrated the grave, yeah. This was a tall grave. It's either broke itself un unintentionally or it's been desecrated. One of the two. Did this one here? Where? Oh, wow. Let's do this one first, Bert. This isn't in cover. Help me uncover it. This one hasn't been broken at all. The ivy is going to eventually destroy these guys, so it looks a bit vicious, but we are helping these to stop the ivy from getting into the... The ivy kind of grips into the sandstone, and over time it will destroy it. Right. We've got a name. Right. Memory of... Can you see that, Bert? Any ideas? Because my eyesight's not... Oh, a spittle. We know loads of spittles. Wow. That's amazing. The daughter of Joseph <coughs> Mary Dudley. Ah, oh, that would have been a Dudley then, marrying into a spittle. Died March 11th, 11, 11, 18, 1855. 1855. <sighs> age 31. 31, still we very young. Mary Ann. What's that? Um, passionate, no? Yeah, passionate remembrance. Is it? It's a new from to be started here. A perfection. Affectionate, affectionate remembrance of Mary Ann, wife of Mill. Yeah, Dudley. What's his name? Mildew. Mule. Samuel. Samuel. Samuel Dudley's big old Bible name, Samuel, 1860, age 50 years. Uh, life has 
Life ends. Life. Her end was peace. Wow. So she went peacefully. That's a sentiment we all want to eat at the end of our lives. But it's got another one there. So we're just taking away the weeds and uncovering these amazing gravestones and showing you guys at home the beautiful Independence Chapel that was. This is now a disgrace. It's overgrown. Apparently the council owns it, but they've done nothing with it. It was sold to the council for various reasons, including the doing up of that road. But these stones, they are stunning. People put money into these. Samuel is a big Bible name. And these are of all prescribed to the same church, which was the independent. Their dad would have been Wesleyan. You know, their mom could have been Wesleyan. You know, and the Wesleyans, oh wow. Look at this though for a second. So we've got another Samuel what? Uh, Astley, Astley, Samuel Astley. Guys, we need to look these up. I've just got pigeon poo on my hand. Is that a good sign or not? Um, so there's a lot of pigeons in these trees. Um, okay, blessed are, this is badly deteriorating. Again, you can see the effect that the ivy has on these stones, guys. It's literally tearing them apart. So what we might do is, if there's enough response off this, come back with a brush and clean up what we can and, and photograph what we can. For you guys to do your family history on it because there's members of your family in this graveyard guys some of them might not be in the graves because of the grave robbers but the majority will be they would have made care taken care to make sure the graves were caged underneath or stoned they'd have had various techniques of stopping the grave diggers in the end they also started putting watchtowers up so grave guards that could afford it would have watchtowers put up especially in london that's where the industry is massive anywhere you've got big medical colleges you're in trouble but I'm sure in the end they'd travel, so they wouldn't be suspicious. Once those graveyards got the terrors and got the guards, they'd move on to a little village somewhere, a couple of days drive. It's worth it for nine quid, isn't it? A week's journey and you get nine quid at the end of it. But struggling with this one, there's quite a lot of ivy on it. So we've got a kind of, it's like splitting a banana. Don't know that big tree it. It's coming. Wow, right, it's a big boy this is. Another one there. Wow. Well spotted. Oh, look at the top of that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's like Georgian, eh? Again, look at the damage these ivy are doing. You cannot read that anymore. It's luckily, sometimes at the bottom, it's just the religious stuff. The important stuff's at the top. The name, the dates. And that's like generally what they want. It could be where they died, how they died, a battle. We might be losing valuable information. <coughs> <coughs> this needs to stop. I know there is a project going on where a guy's going around with a LiDAR and he's picking up these stuff and he can actually decipher this stuff. Okay, yeah, I know, he's making, I might actually try and get an email to him. He's making a database of lost graves stuff before they all disappear, guys. Because in a hundred years, this yeah. will be important to somebody. Well, Name, it's beautiful. Ge Ge a Georgian style, Georgian style pot and urn. You'd see that on the top of a Georgian building. This is classical Georgian. 1800s, early 1800s, and what date have we got? Just before Victoria, or just in the beginning of Victoria's reign? 1856, 1856. 1856, so Victoria came in around then, didn't she? 1840 something, so Victoria was on the throne, but it's Georgian, and for my money, it's Georgian in style. Absolutely stunning quality. There you go, that's another one who died. They'd put two or three people in the grave sometimes. They're literally two or three foot under my feet. One there, if the body's there at all. There's another one here. <sighs> there, there, like, there's headstones everywhere, guys. And they're being inundated by ivy, which is destroying them over time. Hopefully what me and Bert have done today, will give them a bit more time. So it'll take a few more years for the ivy to get back to where it's been. This is an uncover and half. Bert, I'll let you do the uncover so we can have this. Oh, wow. Look at that, folks. <gasps> That's stunning. And it's strange. It's like they know well, their family. Eh? This is a family grave, guys. They know they're leaving this blank for the next people. But for some reason, they fell out of touch with the church. Or they just didn't have it. They'd had too much space. Not enough people died. They only got to there by the looks of it. Yeah. Oh, wow, guys. Look at it, man. And he, there's a child here in the bird. Did you say there was a child? Yeah, two years old. Wow, two years old, guys. So, like, I'm thinking this is a family stone probably prescribed to by a few people in the family who said, right, when we die, we'll have room for our brothers, sisters, mothers, daughters. They're even putting the kids on. Often they wouldn't be given the, 
the honour of a stone because they didn't have the... Nowadays, a child's death is really touching to humans. Back then, it was common. It was so common that, you know, they're often buried in the garden and stuff. It sounds strange, but every now and again, you'll get a family that does have the feelings we have today, that have got a heart, and they do realise this tragic loss of children, and they give them the respect they deserve, which is a grave with a name. And what was the name of the child? Well, I found them Phoebe Jane Taylor. Yeah. God bless her. A body could go for six pounds in 1830, seven pounds, a lot of money, a few grand today, maybe six, seven grand today. And the reason it was so expensive because once the operator or the person doing the operations had the body, they'd then sell tickets for the theatre for medical students to come and watch and dissect it. So two quid a ticket, 40 people in the theatre, 50 people in the theatre, you can soon see that somebody stealing bodies can make a lot of money. And the middleman was the men stealing the bodies, which was a resurrectionist. Now, I used to think, oh, they'll never get into these graves, but it took time to put these monuments on. It wasn't something that happened overnight. And I think that's one of the reasons these slabs went on. People would put iron, they'd put iron over them, cages. They put slabs over the graves to stop them. Look at this man. Beautiful memorial with something missing off the top. And also it's important for something. Yes, it means something. Somebody might know. But I can't think now. So here we go. There's one of them. The, the, the body might not be in here, guys. It might have been stolen the day after it was buried. I don't know. Something to do with Jesus, I think. In sacred memory of John Edward Nelson. What I've seen this one before. Nelson, guys. What a name. Conjures up some amazing ideas. And look at that. It's like the, the pyramid, isn't it? The, the needle in, in America. But obviously an Egyptian idea. They were mad on the Egyptians around this period. What year is this? 1879, quite late on, this is a very early churchyard and I've never found the earliest grave. But yeah, these resurrectionists were monsters, man. Can you imagine what they were doing, stealing bodies for profit? And what stopped it all was, eventually they brought out new laws saying that people who didn't have their bodies collected from poor people, they could be used. Which was awful, really. You know, there was no, none of us had a say in it. Um, the, I think what made it change the law in the end was it turned nasty. It don't take long to realise if you can make money off dead bodies, you start making your own dead bodies, don't you? And a gentleman called William Hare and, and William Burke would start actually stealing bodies. They stopped stealing bodies. The first idea they had was up north in Scotland, in Edinburgh, a friend of theirs died and owed them rent money. So they thought, aye, aye, I've got an idea. We'll, we'll sell the body to these people. And they made a profit. They didn't only get their money back for the rent, they also made a profit. So then that was it. It was all over. They started murdering. Thousands of bodies beneath us. Some poor pers that just prescribed to the, ch the, the church and couldn't afford a stone. Others got amazing big stones. I think this is the poorer side on this side. Is that a kitchen knife? See, a lot of stuff gets thrown over this wall. It's a shame. You have to watch where you're treading, but it's well worth Well, I wouldn't advise anybody to come here, but it needs to be dealt with. This needs clearing. Right, so there's a, we're at the back of the graveyard now. And oh, I think they started there. The church wasn't very thick by the looks of it. Another stone here. <coughs> Absolutely. Been pulled off. Some vandal has pulled the stones off. But uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's another look at the Independent Chapel, Dudley, the Lost Graveyard, guys. The Lost Graveyard. And I mean, over that side, we got some amazing stones, didn't we? These ones are big monumental ones. With good names on them, but you can see a bit more money went into these. And it was earlier, so it was at the period where they were putting big stones on to stop people bit digging them up, basically. A fresh cadaver back then was worth money. And then later on it stopped because they started accepting poor people's bodies in the churches. Okay. Okay. Right, let's have another look at this now. The sun's shining on it, guys. Wow. Big old monument. We don't get monuments like that no more. Law came in, I think, in the 1900s, stopping that from happening. Up here, I've mentioned these before, the old bricks with the fingerprints in. These are old brickwork. This is, guys, if we could go back in time to when this was new, it would be 1700s, 1780s, 1790s, I'm sure. Let's have a look at this one. I think I've seen this one before. Joseph Lloyd. Again, guys, if you can get some information on this, leave a comment, man. Leave a comment. I'll get it better on the other side, I think. I mean, if you were a grave robber, that would deter you, wouldn't it? Big old gravestone like that would deter you. I'm not joking. Look at that one, guys. Can you see that? Look at that. That needs clearing off. I can just about see William George something. 
No, that's one with two sides, so it's two, yeah, William George, you know, big, big stone, that is big, heavy stone, absolutely amazing. Right, guys, this is it. You can see the state this place is in. It's disgusting. Something needs to be done. I'm saying all this and I should be doing it myself. And I probably will come and get to, we've done some today. All this ivy is destroying these graves. They're only sandstone and it's not the strongest material. It needs to come off. You know, I love to see nature and I love to see Victorian graveyards covered in creepers. But if it's destroying the grave, look at that, it's getting inside the grave there. It's gonna split it open. The roots of these can become powerful. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just a little insight into that amazing graveyard again. Something that's been asked for for a few months now. I've been saying I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna. The next one's gonna be, the next video I hope, I know it's gonna be actually, is uh, the one on the catastrophe in Chipton, guys. Look out for that, it's gonna be a good one. Thanks Bert for today, mate. No problem, be sunny, get that bit of twig off me, pal. Uh, hopefully we'll take no ghosts back with us. But yeah, amazing place, man. Dudley Council, sort your act out. Um, if you want to see more videos where we uncover places like this, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed today, let us know in the comments. If you didn't enjoy today, let us know in the comments. We do this for you guys, really. That's what it's all about. So thank you, Black Country History Hunter, Bertie Cameraman. See you on the next one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's go. All bells in paradise, I heard them ring. Bits gold on the outside and silver within.